have sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, this is Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Got a really, really awesome video uh, last night playing clan battles and used a Marceau and can't wait to share it with you right now. But if you before we begin, if you see value in the channel, like, subscribe, bell button below, comment on uh, the section below and uh, let me know what you think. If you like what we're doing here, what have you seen? What have you tried? And as always, we're trying to better the community and get better at the same time. We can't thank you guys enough. So let's get right to it. Tears of the Desert with the Marceau. This is that's probably one of the best matches I can use as an example as to why the Marceau is literally the best destroyer right now for clan battles, for randoms, for if you want to be that leader type. If you are a DD main and you are leading your team, if you're calling the shots, I think the destroyer that literally fits the best mold for everything is literally the Marceau. And here's the video. And as you can see from you know, the thumbnail and everything, uh, literally winning, uh, was it, so we won literally seven straight in a row, and I, I'm not trying to take all the credit for it, but really the Marceau, I think, is the reason why we won those games, because when I picked a different destroyer, I noticed that the, the, um, the, the win rate just kind of uh, lowered a little bit. I'm not saying everything, but I'm saying that the Marceau literally is probably the most powerful component. When it comes to uh, games like this where there are no carriers or submarines, and really it's just strictly surface warfare and positioning tactics and strategy, and that's why I really enjoy it a lot. So let's get right to it. Uh, let's talk about uh, why the Marceau is really the best, uh, I would say, uh, weapon system that we can definitely use in um, our, the, uh, the game and the match. So let's take a look at this right here. So Tears of the Desert, how we normally set up. Now, this particular strategy that I'm about to show you right now with the Marceau in the yellow here, and obviously this is kind of just a basic setup, but we're in the northern part, uh, as you can see. Southern team is always um, at a disadvantage, I believe, honestly. That's my personal opinion. Uh, but this actually kind of works both uh, on both sides. If you want to try this strategy, let me know. But it's basically, if you want to just quite simply say put it, it's just a big massive push towards uh, Charlie Bravo. And that's pretty much it. I mean, it's very simple like that. And I'll tell you why that is the case. Because if I'm playing on the southern side, I'm, most of the time, if I do a massive push, it's up to alpha. So you kind of see this clockwise pattern right here. And that's kind of, uh, again, it works kind of both ways, if you want to call it that. But the problem with the Charlie Bravo push to the further, their, uh, farthest east I don't like is because it takes so much time to travel and the gig is up by then. So I like this kind of quick push, and I'll, and I'll explain why when we move the ships uh, and accordingly. So you kind of understand the idea now. Now, this also requires the Marceau player to be a diversion. Why? So look at the Marceau player. This is me, uh, Marceau player, and why is it the best? Well, speed. I mean, the, it's like a Kleber. It literally is the exact same hole and speed as the Kleber. And it's, you're getting up to 54 knots uh, if you're using the speed boost the whole time, which lasts literally, if you build for, about four minutes. So four minutes on speed boost, you're on adrenaline's kind of steroids. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Massar, Marceau also gets that French saturation uh, gimmick where, you know, the more and more you pump into it, it doesn't do it. It starts, the re damage is starting to be reduced. So you're kind of getting a depreciation by shooting a Marceau. I mean, it takes more and more shots uh, the longer you're shooting at it to kill it, uh, which is pretty crazy. And not to mention that it's going fast. So you're trying to hit a fast moving target that has diminishing returns as you're shooting at it. So very, very deadly to shoot against, against a Colbert Marceau. That's why every time I see one in the game, I'm always like, whoa, stay clear of them be cautious, understand what you're going up against. So the, okay, here's the idea right here. The Marceau player, which is me, the leader, uh, is cool because I'm calling the shots. I'm telling the team, Hey, where we're going, what we're doing. So we're all on the same page, right? So I'm going to be the diversion. I'm also in a max gun build, full range gun build on the Marceau, devastating firepower. You're talking about the highest DPM in the game. Go look it up. The stats show it. Uh, if, if you don't know here, actually I'll pull it up right here so you can see, uh, I got the pressure up. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we'll go destroyer. I know, I know you're not getting to see the whole screen here. Forgive me. Um, let's see. It's, where is it at? Destroyer French. I'll put, uh, oops. No, I'll put all destroyers. Highest DPM in the game, main battery, and we'll put DPM HE. Boom, Marceau, 253,000. I know you can't see it. There it is, French. You can tell. Four, 127 millimeter guns. AP damage is pretty high, but look at that. Highest DP, HE DPM in the game. Pretty, pretty awesome and ridiculous. Okay, so we already got that pest out of the game. So we know it's the highest DPM, one of the powerful destroyers in the game. Cool. This allows it to do what I'm trying to do with it. Now, watch the team, what it does. So I'm going to have the destroyer lead with the cruisers. Obviously, the destroyer is faster than the cruisers and so forth. Some cruisers are not. The French cruisers are faster. Um, let me move this. Sorry, they moved the title out of the way there. So you can see cruisers are following. And oops, I put a, another destroyer, which should not be the case. It should be a battleship. 
will be looking like that. That's what it's going to look like, okay? So you got this kind of basic setup. Now, why is this so advantageous for this push? So the destroyer is going to push all the way forward now. The shore is going to basically be the the canary in the cave or uh, basically the uh, point man because then you're going to spot whatever's out here in the first place and then the rest of the guys are going to shoot in force and mass. Now, the way I think the enemy team is going to do it, probably have one person go to Bravo and then, of course, the other destroyer goes to Alpha, a cruiser, and another cruiser go to Alpha. A battleship probably follows in the middle. Maybe they'll have a cruiser or two down here. Maybe. I'm assuming this is kind of what most people break up as. There's the option of pushing a, a hard, which I have seen most people do. So I assume just kind of a basic split up, and this kind of handles a lot of the situations. Now, for this particular map, I'm going to show that I think a majority of the people go up to Alpha. Now, why, why wouldn't I? B is an easy cap, so you don't need that many ships to cap right away unless you're trying to do a massive Bravo Charlie push. But I think most teams will go for Alpha because that's the highly most anticipated cap. Now, what am I doing? I am, as a destroyer player, going to basically open fire right away, get spotted, and try to get some of these cruisers to fire back at me and reveal their positions all while I'm firing back and starting as many fires as I can. Mar Marceau is incredible at starting fires, and it's very annoying, which is going to bait a lot of these ships to actually follow in suit. So most of the time, what's going to happen is I'm probably going to fall back to my, my spawn area while dragging everybody with me, and they're probably going to go, oh, we got a free cap, right? So that's great. You're luring the enemy into the den, and you're also maybe getting a battleship, getting out of position and so forth. Most people like to play out the wide flanks here or hide behind islands, putting them out of the game. Why do I say out of the game? Because guess what? All while our enemy team is push, or sorry, our friendly team, uh, main force is pushing in. Hopefully, our um, our, our a destroyer and uh, the uh, other enemy destroyer are going to duke it out and maybe have a cruiser in support. All while the main force is continuously pushing through this cap right here. And the reason why I like this so much is because now you have full broad shots and you also have broad shots that are used in mass, which looks you have one, two, three, four, five. Five people shooting. Of course, these are over islands and so forth, but again, you'll you'll eventually get a shot. You have five people all focus firing on one person and that is devastating. And again, it won't matter if they're masked over here as well, because you got maybe one player still worrying about me, you have a destroyer player that's distracted by me, and you also have another cruiser probably firing at me and capping, and this guy's behind an island probably. Battleship is also out of position as well, and that's exactly what leads to the, 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 the focused fire because now they're so spread out because they're thinking, oh, hey, the Marceau's over here, there must be another group of ships, therefore we need to focus all our guns to the north while they're unsuspecting, unsuspectingly being shot at from the broadsides of uh, the main force pushing from Charlie to Bravo. These two characters right here are probably going to get eliminated because they're just overwhelmed by five five to six ships here. And it really is just, I'm just going to assume that these are going to be eliminated just by sheer number. And then, of course, we just have basically broadside shots shooting into Alpha, and we have two caps. Now, here's the clever thing. As the Marceau starts to retreating, it allows you to do two options. Because of its speed, it's able to go back around all the way if we need to recap Alpha because of the speed. Or it also can come back and cap Charlie and allow you to protect it while this team continues to push uh, up towards alpha and swings around. So that is very, very powerful in regard. So you have to be very, very cautious. Now, here's here's the downside about this. The biggest downside that you're going to face is literally um, the, the problem of, and I'll say one problem that could arise is that you have all this space right here that is a broad shot. The broad shots are really going to be your only fearful factor because that's why I always t tell my teammates, hey, be very, very careful as you're progressing down from Charlie to Bravo because you are exposing your broadside to Alpha, which is also a very, very uh, deadly thing. Now, the way to mitigate that is literally everybody's heads on a swivel, and it's very quite simply the easiest way, the easiest thing to do right here for the uh, my, my friendlies is just to turn in, turn in towards uh, Alpha and Bravo because we've already eliminated Bravo cap. The other option option that you have here is you can also have your ships turn away, go down this channel. Now you're go heading away and uh, mitigating your broadsides to Alpha as well. So that that is the biggest downside from Charlie to Bravo push. But again, because the team is not expecting that, they're looking at me the whole time because I'm firing. And you're going to notice that in the replay. I am literally firing every single time I'm moving around here just to get the enemy team to fire at me. And again, what is the, uh, the, ask the traits of a good destroyer player? You're alleviating the pressure off your team by taking those shots. And that's exactly what I want to do. 
is one less shot on my enemy, my friendly teams, my friendly. So firing back from Charlie to Bravo is going to be a must or focus fire, but also mitigating that threat by me as the destroyer player up here, causing a major distraction, as well as teaching our uh, friendlies basically how to mitigate damage by angling. Uh, that's the key word here. Angling is either turning away from the threat or you're actually turning in to the threat and going slim profile, mitigating any kind of broadsides and shots. So let's take a look at the video and I'll explain in more um, more specific and even uh, greater depth as to how this actually plays out and uh, hope you enjoy. Boost activated. All right, team, here we are, Tears of the Desert with the Marceau, number one leading uh, destroyer for being a team leader in any kind of uh, uh, team-based rank competition, whatever you want to call it. But while we're sailing, we talked about the strategy. We're going to do a massive push, Charlie Bravo. And then, of course, we have the Marceau leading for the major distraction at Alpha. But before uh, we go into that, while we're sailing to target, and I let you get to see, if you want to skip passes, go for it. But I want you to let you see how the team movement is actually uh, working out while the team is pushing down. You can see how we're actually moving together and how we're actually playing out the strategy. But I'll tell you a little about the Marceau. Marceau is the cold alternative to Club Air. She shares Club Air's hull. But her differences warrant a completely different playstyle. She mounts the 127mm guns of the Colbert at the trade-off of reduced HE alpha damage and slower shell ballistics in exchange for higher AP alpha. She also enjoys a concealment advantage over Colbert and has longer range torpedoes. Marceau differs from her sister Colbert in many ways, primarily her guns, which boasts the highest DPM of any tier 10 destroyer. However, in exchange for the powerful gun, she still suffers from the lack of smokescreen consumables and her torpedoes are rather underwhelming due to their poor speed, mediocre range, and slow reload. This leads to destroyer to hunter type role, which is she can test caps and run down enemy destroyers with her extremely high speed in order to make up for poor consumption while gunning them down with her more powerful guns before quickly turning away and going dark to search for her next prey. Marceau is a poor counter to cruisers. <laughs> I really laugh at that one. We'll prove that in this video. Her limited gun range means that unless players take upgrades, she must venture dangerously close to battleships to deal damage to them with her guns. As you can see, we're opening up right now, drawing that enemy fire, kind of like the wild weasel missions in the Vietnam era. We're really trying to just get them to fire, which we do. We're successful. GK actually takes a shot at us, which I'm like, wow, a battleship taking a shot at a Marceau at 14 kilometer range. Laughable, right? Okay, here we go. Now we got the first cruiser victim right here. We got a Napoli. Now I'm actually surprised at how accurate the Napoli guns are. They are super... Um, in this match, actually, I'm very surprised at how accurate the, the player must be very good aiming. It was able to get shots on us and damage us. But again, with that uh, French saturation, it actually helps us out by getting shot at because we do absorb damage very, very well. For those more acquainted with the style of gunboat play, gameplay, a different play style can be taken on by taking full advantage of Marceau's speed and damage output. At first, Marceau may be hang back or may hang back using her speed and handling to fire at enemy battleships and cruisers with more sluggish shells that she can dodge. As the game progresses, however, she can get closer to the battlefield, exhibiting a exhibit control of capture zones and hunt down enemy destroyers, as well as even rushing down battleships if the situation calls for it. So as you can see right now, we're just harassing cruisers right now. Look, we've already taken 13,000 damage off, and he's still firing at us. That's great. He's way out of position as well, way to the western flank of Alpha. Look at where our team is on the minimap. They're still moving down, progressing, because we've got this decoy kind of sweet left hook from the Gulf War days of moving in and sweeping in Bravo, and the enemy team is just not realizing it until it's too late. For those, uh, I'm sorry, overall this leads to a play style that revolves around her powerful guns, but is limited by her short range and poor ballistics. Again, you're seeing me play the long range version of Marceau and showing it how it is a really, really great asset. Marceau is a powerful destroyer with the potential to turn around games in the right hand. So let's take a look at the video as always. The, 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 as you can see right now, the uh, friendlies are now pushing now through Charlie, and I think the jig is up, right? Now, I think the enemy team now notices that, wait a second, there's nobody here at Alpha, it was easy cap, and they're all pushing down from Charlie to Bravo, but here it doesn't matter. This is a World of Warships, not World of Airplanes. You, for you to have a quick reaction turnaround time, with battleships and cruisers is proves to be very very difficult because of the speed and nature of warship gameplay and that is exactly why we do kind of these kind of maneuvers because that's why it all talks about i always talk about position 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 you cannot correct poor position because once it happens, it's over. I mean, I teach that in uh, the squadron I'm in as well. When I teach guys when we're flying, hey, you know what? You can't correct poor positioning. So when you establish a stake in the ground or your hold pattern or whatever that may be, that, that sets up your success and your failure. So that's why I always say, hey, you cannot correct poor position. Might as well start off on the right foot. So you can see right here, we're drawing enemy fire but from four ships. One little measly destroyer is drawing fire from four, and that's exactly why we do this. Mosfa takes down one of their uh, cruisers out at uh, Charlie, or Bravo that is, 
and that's exactly what we want to do. Now they have free game, free open uh, open uh, firing season from the, uh, the south, east, and they're firing to the northwest, and that's exactly what I want. Now look, notice, they, the enemy team has to make a decision here. They're either going to continue pursuing me, which I'm proving to be a major threat to them right now. Notice I'm setting fires and everything on the Janan. I've already started two fires. We're firing from long range distance. Janan is having a hard time leading those wonky lofty shells. And I do believe we get another fire. And there's another fire right there on the Janan. He's probably cursing himself to death right now, going, how the crap is a Marceau hitting me from that long range and the speed? Now, as a team leader right here, I'm going and calling, hey, we've got Charlie Bravo. Go ahead and get in position. Nose into the enemy threat. Start picking them off one by one. Meanwhile, the whole time, I'm still sitting in the back here. I have two options. Either retreat to Charlie and uh, guard it, or I can push into Alpha and take over Alpha from behind. And that's exactly why I like the Marceau. The speed allows you to quick reaction to any kind of uh, developing situation, and that's why you can keep your head on a swivel. Now, here's another dangerous aspect of the Marceau. Long range fire starting. GK, although uh, GK is opening up on the secondaries, and notice that he is prioritizing us, but again, that's to a little avail. Uh, it is very difficult to hit a Marceau at this long range. Uh, secondary computer is trying to lock onto us, but we're rejuking with the throttle right there, and we're starting more and more fires. So go ahead and continue firing back and forth, back and forth, and that's exactly why we're getting these nice, easy fires on a large target like the, uh, the GK, and it is a large target to to aim for and that's what makes it a little bit easier now we're also firing Janan is also looking for us as well and he's also exposing his broadside to our friendly team you can see look he's taking shots from his right but again what are we doing we're, be, we're a bigger threat that that is the sad part about this is we are somehow a bigger threat than citadels to a uh, to a Janan the Janan thinks that a Marceau firing at it from long range with HE is deadlier than a full battleship or cruiser firing straight into his broadside. That tells me that you are doing a great job as a destroyer player. If you can take shots, and right there, look there. Elbing takes a broadside shot right into the Janan. Exactly what we wanted. We wanted major distractions. Again, you don't have to take kills in order to win the game. You want to lead from the front and let your friendlies take all the credit and take the shots because that's exactly how you win the game as a cohesive fighting unit and moving together as one. And that's really awesome. I know it sounds cliche. You hear it in movies all the time, but it works. And that's why you learn a lot of that from military leaders as well as strategists, as well as planners and tactics and development and weapons uh, tactics and development teams. So, as you can see right now, we're also taking major damage from, I'm noticing that Napoli is very deadly with these SAP secondaries, very accurate at long range. So, something to think about when you're actually dealing with guys like this, because it's very d deadly, and I kind of have to be cautious about firing on Napoli's because it becomes a very, very deadly, uh, I would say, game to play when you start dealing with computerized secondaries and so forth. And again, another... Uh, uh, Enemy team goes down from the GK, and that's exactly why uh, we wanted that focus firing and also coordination on that part as well. And the other aspect is this, is the Napoli is, uh, again, I don't know what it is with the Napoli. It just has super accurate guns firing at long range, and it's able to connect with our ship from long, long range, and that is something we have to be cautious about. And I almost want to elect to stop firing, but I'm trying to reset this before my, um, I'm actually waiting for my, um, I'm actually waiting for the uh, team to actually come back and rescue me from the Napoli. And I want to be careful as to not overdo or overextend myself because although I am connecting with the shots from the Napoli, I do want to make sure I'm not taking too, too much damage as to throw the game or throw uh, our ship away. And that's something we don't want to do as well because the Marceau, like we read earlier in the bio, can pl uh, play a crucial ro role in the end game as coming back to actually save the game cap uh, caps that are literally on the open because of its speed of its agility and that's exactly why we would be, be very very careful as to not throw the game uh in that regard now notice the map is still firing us either he's just really pissed off at us or he just knows that hey the marceau is a very de devastating ship to deal with wow we are literally hanging on by bubble gum and tape right here 89 health and uh, I, I had to stop shooting now, this last shot right here, I know that the, the uh, reload is about 10 to 13 seconds, so cooldown is about 20. So right there, there's that one shot. We have to stop firing right here, and we go undetected. So hopefully this last shot does not connect us in the bow, and whoa. Wow, we survived that one with literally a wing and a prayer right there. And that was literally uh, our gut-wrenching moment for the game. Fortunately, we survive, and we're able to now... 
uh, continue our uh, our press back down to Charlie. Now, that's the beautiful thing about the Marceau. We can go back and cap Charlie and actually help our friendly team eliminate the remaining destroyer player. Notice that the Napoli is now uh, in a situation where does he turn and run at, towards me and get broadside, or does he continue running away to avoid getting shot at by our Annapolis? So this is good about teamwork and coordination, about communication. We are using our speed to run away. Our speed boost goes down. So instead of 54 knots, we're only going to get maybe 45, which is still fast for a destroyer. So we're going to start racing back down to the south, avoiding we're not going to take any shots. We're not going to expose ourselves. We're going to continue calling the match from uh, our position because now we can see, spot, and also look at our minimap to understand where the enemy team is at right now. So as you can see, Charlie Bravo totally uh, under control right now. We have a point lead. We're up by 200-something points. We don't have to push the objective. We can really just sit and cap. We can also wait for the enemy team to make a mistake and come towards us right now. Annapolis has got radar active, so he can continue firing at the Shimakai. I'm going to continue uh, to hold with the Annapolis to make sure that that Shimikaze does not come back to haunt us. There's nothing worse than having a destroyer player come back to haunt you at the end of the game. Okay, hey, hey, look at what I'm doing. You want to make sure that every destroyer player is eliminated in any kind of competitive clan battle or anything because they can come back to haunt you. And I've seen it many times in a game where it is literally that deadly and that serious. Right now, Na uh, Napoli is deciding, debating upon if he wants to chase me or is he going to actually go one on one with the Annapolis. So, Napoli, very, very powerful, very heavily armored ship. We've, I've done a video about it. It's, it is literally the fullback of World of Warships, and I still think it holds that title to this day. It's very, very hard to kill and uh, very deadly with the SAP secondary buff that it got. And again, you can see that the Naples is having a tough time trying to kill this thing. It just requires way too much uh, firepower and damage to take down. All while the Naples is like a Des Moines, it's just very soft armor, so it's, it's not hard to destroy or kill. Uh, our team at Bravo is dealing with the small end right there, which I'm not too worried about. Our uh, battleship went down, but we still have Charlie. Our other destroyer is now sneaking behind and capping Alpha. So you see, it's crucial to have at least as many destroyers as possible to do these late game kind of pushes back into a cap to take it and negate and uh, degrade the enemy's team's ability to cap points, as well as to win the game in the, uh, the, the very long run. Shimakaze is coming back through the smoke here, I believe. So we're going to have to make sure that we don't lose our Naples. I might have to sacrifice myself, but I have to cap this point to make sure we get this victory and seal the deal. Okay. Shimakaze is nose into us. That's a good sign right there. That means we have the advantage. Our gunpowder is going to be able to destroy him very, very quickly. He only needs to get one shot on us, but look, we get a nice shot from our Puerto Rico. Communications going on right now. Hey, who's going to fire? Here come our shells. They're about to hit us. They're about to hit us. Get as many as we can on target. He takes us out, and boom. Not until we take him. Splash one. That's our one kill for the day. We did our part. Naples, you just got to avoid this torpedo. Oh, that torpedo proved crucial right there. So, had the Annapolis um, been able to either kill that uh, Shimakaze first or we killed it first, it wouldn't have mattered. Either way, we took out the Shimakaze. They're now down one more ship. We have the five, and that's how we end the game right there based on points. And if we eliminate this Petro right here, it pretty much ends the game. So that is the power and uh, capabilities of the Marceau. We had like six or uh, seven more games like this where the Marceau literally dominated the battlefield. It bullied the destroyers. It bullied the cruisers out of caps. It literally is a fire starter. It is literally the one that is going around capping and doing every single thing a destroyer player should be doing. And I highly recommend every team run a Marceau at least as a point man, as a captain, as a, a team lead uh, that allows you to lead from the front and as well as put firepower and pressure on the enemy force to allow your team to hunt uh, with ease. So hope you guys liked the video. Let me know. Like, subscribe, up and low. Appreciate all the support. Uh, if you see something you liked, you didn't like, let us know in the channel in the comments below. And as always, if you see me out there, say hi. And thanks for bringing uh, the better community to uh, the World of Warships uh, gameplay. So have a great one. Build is at the end of the screen. Check it out. Full gunboat build for range and firepower sacrificing concealment. Take care, guys. Cheers.